Welcome to Worship with Westminster Presbyterian Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Chris Peters, and I'm grateful that you're worshiping with us online this week. Today we begin a series of walking through what it means to be good stewards of different things in our lives, the good gifts of God in our lives. And that series may sound a little bit strange because we often think of stewardship as something we do in the fall that ends with Dedication Sunday, but this is stewardship outside the stewardship season. And today we'll look at the most fundamental piece of our stewardship, looking at what it means to be good stewards of God's world. God our Creator, God who made all that there is, and God who loves us. So as we look at the creation with wonder, we are compelled to care for God's earth. And now I want to invite you to hear a message from Elder Grace Himmerling as she shares with us about Camp Calvin Crest, certainly a place where we can experience God's world and be good stewards, as well as fostering a sense of wonder in young people. Grace. Hi, my name is Grace Hemmerling, and I'm an elder at Westminster Church. We are blessed to have an amazing church camp right outside of Fremont. Calvin Crest is a camp, a conference center, and a retreat center that our confirmation class has used many times. My family and I have gone since I can remember, and I've been to every camp from family camp up until senior high work camp. I'm a counselor now, meaning I am there all summer helping every child learn and grow. Camp has offered me many leadership and faith building skills as well as many opportunities to learn to use these skills. Craig Huffman and his family run the camp, so not only are the counselors eager to help your child grow, but so is the director and the staff. And if a child is more comfortable, they are more willing to learn and grow. The camp is taking extra measures to make sure that everyone that is coming is safe so there's no time like the present. If you have any questions from a child or a counselor perspective, feel free to talk to me. If you have any questions from a parent's perspective, feel free to talk to my parents, Kent and Jamie Hemmerling. They are more than willing to answer your questions. Registration is now, so go to calvincrest.camp or I also have brochures you can use. Calvin Crest has shaped not only my faith journey, but me as a person. The best way to help a child grow is by getting them out and experiencing God firsthand. Let us join together in the call to worship. Let my holy being bless the Lord. Lord, my God, how fantastic you are. Lord, you have done so many things. You made them all so wisely. The earth is full of your creations. The Lord's trees are well watered. The cedars of Lebanon, which God planted, where the birds make their nests. Lord, you have done so many things. You made them all so wisely. The earth is full of your creations.
The grace of God overflows for us like the waters through Christ Jesus, who came into the world to save sinners. Let us confess our sins before God and one another, first silently and then together. And now let us pray together. Holy and merciful God, in your presence, we confess our failure to be what you created us to be. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. By your loving mercy, help us to care for your world and for one another in the way of Jesus Christ. Amen. who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Believe and share the good news. excited to be here today. It's spring, the sun is shining, and I'm sure you have heard some of the wonderful bird songs lately. We are in our church family right now celebrating creation care, and that is a time of year where we think about ways that we can really take care of our planet. And when you think about it, that could really be every day. So this is the time of year where people are planning their vegetable gardens and thinking about buying plants and flowers and planting seeds. And that's what I'm going to do today. I bet you know that some of the seeds that we plant are good for pollinators, for our bees and butterflies especially. And so I brought my butterfly house to show you today. I planted last year some bee balm, and so I'm really hoping that some butterflies will come and use this house this year. So I brought some seeds today for hummingbirds. It's a wildflower seed mix that hummingbirds really like, and I really hope that they will come and see these flowers when they start to grow. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to plant these seeds and watch them grow. So I am going to cut this off. I have my pot with some soil in it, so I'm going to plant some seeds. Oh, they are really tiny and put a few more in there okay all right so there's that and then i'm going to cover it up with a little bit more soil just a little bit and then i have my water so i'm going to water my seeds okay give them just a little drink and then i'll have to keep watching and make sure that it doesn't dry out i need to make sure that they stay nice and wet and that they're in the sun so okay so we have our pot, our soil, our seeds, our water. Okay, I've done everything right. So they're gonna grow. We're gonna have flowers for the hummingbirds. It's gonna be great. Okay, nothing's happening. Um, you know what, I wonder. Uh, 
it says seven to 21 days before they're gonna start growing. Ugh, time, that's what I forgot. Our seeds need time to grow. So I guess I'll have to be patient. I can do that, I can do that. So I want you to remember this exciting time of year and maybe go and buy some seeds of your own to plant for some pollinators for our bees and our butterflies. And thank you for thinking about your planet and taking care of your church home. All right, will you say a prayer with me, please? Dear God, thank you for this church and for this church home. Thank you for the chance to plant things that will help our planet. One bee, one butterfly, and one hummingbird at a time. It's in your son Jesus' name that I pray and let all God's children say, amen. Friends, as we prepare to hear God's Word read and proclaimed, let us pray. God of all who wonder, 
as we walk through the life of faith, as we walk through the beautiful theater of your world, meet us with the mystery of your spirit. And by that spirit's power, open our minds, unlock our hearts, and aliven our faith at the hearing of your word, so that we may welcome the risen Christ among us and share the good news of life in Christ the good news of our lives in this created world. Amen. Last week in our creation celebration service, my friend, Reverend Dr. Ellen's Fowler Skidmore, joined us virtually from South Carolina for our sermon, and I loved a lot of the things that she had to say. In that sermon, Ellen helped us look at the concept of what it means to care for those who are downstream from us as we care for God's earth. She even challenged us as people who live on the North Platte watershed to consider how we very literally impact the waterways and the soil that carries into the waterways around us, those places that pass through Lincoln and then on down to farms and soils and other waterways to our neighbors downstream. Today as we shift into a series about being good stewards I think we should recognize that the metaphor of caring for those downstream is a perfect metaphor for what it means to be good stewards. When we care for something in our lives or in our world, we are thinking beyond ourselves, thinking about those downstream, thinking about those in future generations as well. So having set the tone of caring for God's good gifts, let us turn toward the gift of God's Word as we hear Psalm 65 in its entirety. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed, O you who answer prayer. To you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength you establish the mountains. You are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the waves and the roaring of the seas, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at the earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together with joy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we begin our stewardship outside of the stewardship season series, we should be clear that the traditional church stewardship season is one that typically happens in the fall for several weeks, and it ends with a time where we make our pledges for the following year on a day of dedication. And we give those gifts because we're thankful to God. So today, as we engage the idea of stewardship, we do so six months earlier than our usual stewardship season. It puts us a little bit out of rhythm from what we're used to. So I can guess some of the thoughts circulating in the heads out there in our brains today as we think about stewardship six months early. 
perhaps you're thinking, oh gosh, on our Sunday where we're looking at this new concept, they're going to hit us up for money in just a few weeks. Or maybe it's stewardship. I made my pledge in the fall. It's April. I'm not pledging again. Or I've been hearing that Westminster's financial situation looks pretty good. But here our new pastor who moved halfway across the country is being forced to preach a series on money. Something doesn't add up. Or, if I hear stewardship one more time, I'm stopping that YouTube video and I'm done. Because I know what that word really means. So let me be clear. If our thoughts are like those that I just echoed, you better get ready because we're going to go in a much different direction over the next five weeks. You know, over the last 50 years, and certainly in my lifetime, I feel like the idea of stewardship has often intended to be compartmentalized into a pledge drive box. We box it up. But at Westminster, we are not going to be just about how church tends to be. We will be a community that is transparent, authentic, joyful, and boldly faithful as we seek to follow Jesus in our daily lives. So let me assure you of this. Our Stewardship Beyond Stewardship season series is not a ploy to ask for money. In the coming weeks, we will be reminded that stewardship is to be exactly how we orient our lives. Stewardship is how we respond like the words of that psalmist with praise, how we respond to God's forgiveness, God's mercy, God's creative power, and God's love. As Adam Copeland of Luther Seminary Center for Stewardship writes, talking about stewardship once a year and only in terms of financial stewardship is like sitting down for a four-course meal but leaving after a few bites of the appetizer. Even if those few bites are delicious, a hunger remains. So Westminster, this spring, let's enjoy all four courses. Let's go beyond the appetizer of the four-course meal. But don't forget, you need to save room for dessert. So Christians, when we take time to open up the box on the idea of stewardship... I believe we can better connect with the truth that God wants us to care about and to care for the good gifts of our lives, the good gifts of this one life we get to live. So hear that again. God wants us to care about and care for the good gifts of this one life we get to live. And so, Stewardship must be our response. Today we heard words from Psalm 65 of the Old Testament, and it is one of my all-time favorite scriptures. It's rooted in the idea of response to God's goodness. You know, the psalm starts out at the very beginning with praise and thanksgiving for God's mercy. And Psalm 65 moves from there to explore how God has been at work in the natural world. Always coming back to the call for faithful people to praise God and to value God's presence in the creation. Something that you should know about the Psalms is that they speak to the wideness of the human experience. If you were to read the Psalms straight through over a few weeks... You would hear poems of praise and anger, of joy, of peace, of guilt, of community, isolation, fear, and wonder, among other emotions and experiences. So today, as we briefly explore Psalm 65, we will do so through the lens of that last human experience that I just named, wonder, W-O-N-D-E-R, wonder at God's creation. 
Wonder at God's creation makes us realize that while our lives are of immeasurable value and impact, our lives are also fragile and finite. So as we gather here in this service today, I want you to recall those spaces outside. I imagine you're watching in your home. Look at, think about spaces outside that have led you to feel a sense of wonder that connected to creation. Was it looking up at our vast Nebraskan skies to see Orion's belt slowly shift across the sky with the Earth's rotation? Or was it looking down at the soil in your garden as the first signs of a tomato plant break through this spring? Was it looking east toward a navy and orange-hued mountain sunrise in the Rockies on vacation, or west across Holmes Lake to see a purple and gold sunset here in Lincoln? In those moments of wonder at the world around you, did you feel like the writer of Psalm 65 who said this to God? Lord, those who live at the earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. It's amazing to think that someone so long ago could consider those who are far beyond their own small existence, their own small footprint without the modern ways of transportation that we have today. Those who live at the earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. In the moments of wonder at the world around you, did you ask a question like the writer of Psalm 8, who said, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, God, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Or did you reflect on your own room for understanding? Simply in all, like in Proverbs 30, these things are too wonderful for me. Friends, wonder is one of our most basic responses to the world around us. Wonder makes us realize that there's so much more in the universe than just ourselves. And so I think wonder can then inspire us to take action to learn about the natural sciences, to get outside on the weekend and explore, to worship God for the beauty of the world around us, and to be good stewards of God's world. You know, several times since starting here in September, I've walked up onto one of Westminster's classes here at the school. And our gifted preschool director, Rachel Hines, is teaching our children a STEM lesson outside. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. So on one particular day, our preschoolers were outside learning about leaves, which is appropriate with our tree of life during this particular season of stewardship. And I walked up that day and asked, what are you learning about today? And with enthusiasm, the kids were telling me, Pastor Chris, leaves, and Pastor Chris, trees, and how they help the air. Now, for one, I think it's great that Rachel has been working to integrate STEM lessons into Westminster Preschool's curriculum alongside spiritual lessons in times such as chapel. It can be a good reminder to us at Westminster Church that as Presbyterians, we value the complementary conversation that is ongoing between science and faith. Secondly, in that situation with the kids, I loved their enthusiasm at the STEM lessons. As they were learning about trees on that one day, they wanted to share what they were learning with anyone who would walk up. They wanted to show off the leaves that Rachel had given them. They wanted others to share in their own sense of wonder. So as we wonder about God's creation, I hope that you will share in that sense of wonder with others. Because your own sense of wonder just might inspire someone else to take seriously the call to be a good steward of God's world. 
to take a few minutes after Christmas and drive up to the church and bring their styrofoam for recycling. To call their gar garbage company to ask about how to dispose of certain types of waste, rather than just tossing all their waste into one bin. To make the commitment to review their investment portfolio and explore what companies have policies that reflect valuing the earth. To ride a bike, to work, or to school, or to Leon's when those places might just be a short and safe trail ride away. You know, that list goes on and on, and so I'm thankful for the work of Westminster's Green at Heart team that is ongoing to help us hear those ways, both as we explore our seventh annual creation celebration in adult ed, and also as we look ahead to hope with hope for future generations. So if you feel that caring for the earth just isn't your thing, or even that it shouldn't be a concern of the church, I'll ask you this as we close. Have you ever felt a sense of wonder? A sense that this world is bigger than you in your own body? Have you ever looked at a rolling prairie or a rolling wave and said, thank you God for this moment? Have you ever felt a sense of God's presence or creative power in the world around us? We often think of our Presbyterian foreparent, John Calvin, as someone who was maybe a bit dour, and that was far from the case at times. Calvin spoke of the earth as the theater of God's goodness. Calvin even wrote this. It's my favorite quote of his. There is not one blade of grass, there is no color in this world that is not intended to make us rejoice. A great summary of Calvin's own sense of wonder. So friends, if you've ever felt a sense of wonder or revelation from a sunset or even just a one blade of grass, if you felt in awe like the psalmist, then I hope you'll deeply embrace that sense of wonder to see the hills and the meadows and the valleys metaphorically sing with joy and in praise of God, to show the excitement of a preschool child as the leaves bloom in the spring and they learn about those trees. And so I hope you'll hear the call when it's all said and done to care for God's earth as a call for your own life. Because simply put, on this first Sunday of our stewardship series. Being a good steward of God's world is the very first step, the very foundation of caring for all the other gifts of God in our lives. It's a good word for us this day. Friends, to God be the glory. Amen.
pray with me. Oh God, we thank you for your many good gifts for the beauty of creation and its rich and varied fruits, for clean water and fresh air, for food and shelter, animals and plants. Forgive us for the times we have taken Earth's resources for granted and wasted what you have given us. Transform our hearts and minds so that we can learn to care and share, so that we can be bold to make the necessary changes that will mean our children's children will enjoy this beautiful planet. Help us to touch the earth with gentleness and with love, respecting all living things. We pray for all those who suffer as a result of our waste and indifference. And we pray that the day would come when everyone has food and clean water. Help us to respect the rights of all people and all species and give us a willingness to share your gifts today and always. Father, we especially thank you for the opportunity to return to sanctuary worship at Westminster. And we give our gratitude to those in our family, in our church family, who have worked so diligently to create a plan on our behalf that is safe and responsible. May we move gently as we each feel comfortable back into being together knowing this challenge is not over. Renew in us patience when patience is not easily found. Lord, you know our hearts, our worries, and our joys. Thank you for being alongside us. Help us to be alongside each other. And now, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Your charge this week is to simply look around. Look around the world outside, whether it's in your backyard, go to a park, find a space where you can have a sense of wonder and appreciation for God's world, whether it be a blade of grass or looking at the vast stars in the sky. And as you feel that sense of wonder, be compelled to find ways to be good stewards, to care for this amazing gift of creation that God has given. And now, may you go recognizing God as your creator, the God who loves you in Jesus Christ, and the God who sustains you, uplifts you, sends you, and empowers you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be good stewards and know that God is with you in that work. Amen.